example that I have here is zoysia grass and some of the, I guess, main characteristics about it is that you do see a lot of stolen and, and rhizome development that's present with zoysia grass. In fact, it has such heavy uh, lateral stem growth that when you try to pull this out apart, it's extremely difficult. So uh, once again, very aggressive stolen and rhizome type of development for zoysia grass. The tip of the, of the stolen of uh, zoysia grass, uh, particularly if I compared it to something like Bermuda. Bermuda, you would actually see a green leaf at the tip of a stolen. Here with um, zoysia grass, you won't find that to be the case. The growth habit of zoysia grass is um, considered to be kind of upright coming off of the nodes at kind of a 90 degree angle. The leaf formation is rolled, so as these leaves emerge down, I don't know if you can pick that up or over here, but you should notice a lot of hair coming off of the ligule and the collar. That's going to be characteristic of zoysia grass. And then leaf texture, this tends to be a medium. This is a zoysia japonica, which tends to be more of a medium texture zoysia. Uh, we do have other zoysia species that tend to be, can be a finer uh, leaf texture, but this tends to be a medium uh, leaf texture. Here. Sample here is uh, bahia grass. Um, you know, it happened to be down in the Outer Banks this past summer, and you did see a lot of uh, bahia grass, if it maintained properly, to me it looks like the tall fescue that we see uh, here in the Maryland area, and it can have a fairly good uh, shoot density to it. It's got a, uh, uh, once again, it, it appears to be folded. Uh, some of the um, other texts refer to being rolled, but that may appear to be folded. So for identification purposes, when you're starting to look down on the sheaths, and as I look at some of the new leaves emerge, it appears to be folded to me, so I'm going to go with that type of leaf or nation. Uh, probably the other thing, too, that you'll hear about bahia grass is the uh, presence of a lot of um, heavy rhizomes and thick rhizomes. In fact, they're so thick that almost appear to be on the surface to almost look like a stolen. But that's another thing to me that's very characteristic of bahias are these really thick uh, rhizome type growth uh, that the plant will have. The ligule bahia grass is described as a very short, truncate, membranous ligule, less than a millimeter in size. So this is the seed head of uh, bahia grass, and what's going to be characteristic of the, the seed head is how the seed comb comes up and then it splits to make what some people refer to as, as a V, or if you look at it, a Y a shape uh, to it if we include the seed comb. But once again, very characteristic. Each one of these is the spike lid. In fact, I can see here that it looks like the um, stigma and the style is coming out from the individual spike lid. Sample here is uh, buffalo grass. I guess to me, some of the common characteristics, just looking at the plant, um, it's more of a fine textured uh, warm season turf grass. And also, um, the other thing characteristic would be stolen uh, growth to the um, Buffalo grass. So those fine texture, stolen. The other, other characteristics, leaf formation tends to be rolled, but this is once again a fairly uh, fine textured grass, so that might be uh, difficult to show. So this uh, is the staminate flower for buffalo grass, and what generally when it begins to flower, you'll see this come up a couple inches above the canopy, and once again, it's fairly noticeable uh, on the on the surface canopy uh, when buffalo grass is basically. Uh, producing flowers and then down at the base of the plant is where the pistil flower will be located. It's almost like a burr that will form towards the base of the plant. So one of the other really distinctive characteristics with buffalo grass is uh, the presence of hair on the leaf blade, both on the upper portion of the leaf blade and on the underside of the leaf blade. So, you know, to me, the, the near leaf texture, the stolons, the type of seed head, and then also the presence of the hair on the upper leaf blade and on, on, on the uh, lower side of the leaf blade are very characteristic of buffalo grass. The sample that you're looking at here is seashore past palum. Um, right over here is where I have the, the seed head. And uh, similar to bahia grass in that it kind of comes up, but um, typically splits right here, um, much smaller than, than bahia grass. Um, the seashore past palum to me is a grass that you can see anywhere from um, fairway to greens to uh, T type of conditions as far as mowing heights. So it can tolerate kind of a wide range of mowing heights and also with seashore past palum a lot of interest is the ability to tolerate really poor water quality with regards to the amount of salt that are present. So 
the plant will produce uh, a set of rhizomes and or stolons or a combination of both. The sample that you're seeing here is just some rhizome growth uh, from the seashore past pallum. Uh, once again, it can produce rhizomes and stolons. Seashore past pallum, it tends to be more of a fine textured grass and once again can tolerate these much lower mowing heights that you might find on you know, anywhere from a fairway down even to a putting green height. The, um, it appears to be a folded leaf renation uh, as you take a look as the leaves emerge. We're just kind of zooming in on the, uh, the ligule of seashore past pallum. One of the things you'll notice a lot of long hair on the edges around the collar and then if you look down towards the center we can actually see a, a very short uh, membranous ligule for the seashore past pallum. This sample is Bermuda grass and um, at least in the Maryland area it is a very common uh, grass that can survive the Maryland winters. Uh, some of the characteristics um, if we look at the leaf texture, it tends to be kind of medium. We do have some Bermuda grasses that have been improved to have a much finer leaf texture. Uh, very aggressive stolon rhizome type development that we'll find uh, with Bermuda grass and particularly on sports fields where you need that aggressive growth characteristic uh, is where we might find a lot of the Bermuda grasses grown here in the Maryland area. The ligule of Bermuda grass is described as a hairy uh, ligule, once again very characteristic of, of Bermuda grass.